The Caspian Sea is the largest enclosed lake on Earth, extending over the territory of two parts of the world, Asia and Europe. It has a unique ecosystem, which is home to over 400 endemic species specific to this region only. The Caspian Sea abounds in biological resources not found elsewhere in the world. More than 130 fish species are recorded here. The huge river system and vast wetlands of the Caspian Sea are the habitat for diverse flora and fauna and attract millions of migratory birds. However, today, the Caspian Sea is facing serious challenges. The most significant stress factors are global climate change, associated desertification of the Caspian region, and falling sea level, as well as increasing anthropogenic impact caused by growing industrial development of the region. These factors affect all the inhabitants of the Caspian Sea, including the Caspian seal, whose habitat is limited exclusively to this sea. The Caspian seal is an endemic, and the only representative of aquatic mammals in the Caspian Sea. It is at the top of the trophic chain, so the stable state of its population serves as an indicator of well-being of the entire marine ecosystem. These pinnipeds are distributed throughout the entire sea, from the coastal areas of the North Caspian Sea to the shores of Iran. Seals can be found both in extremely shallow areas of the northern part of the Caspian Sea and in aphotic region of the southern part, in cold climate areas and on warmer islands. In general, there are 19 species of seals, which are distributed mainly in the circumpolar range. They can be found in any part of the planet, on almost all coasts of the seas and oceans. Most of the seal species live in the cold seas of the Arctic and Antarctica, but some, like the Caspian seal and the Baikal seal, live in the inland waters of the mainland. The origin of the Caspian seal is an ambiguous and complex issue. Currently, there are two main hypotheses. According to one of them, the common ancestors of the ringed, Baikal and Caspian seal lived in the ancient Paratethys Ocean. About 2.5 to 3 million years ago, some of them migrated to the Arctic Ocean. Back then, it stretched to 61 degrees north latitude and Paratethys to 55 degrees north latitude, and they were separated by about 500 kilometers. Seals remaining in Paratethys originated the Caspian seal, still living in an isolated remnant of the ancient ocean, the Caspian Sea. According to another hypothesis, the Caspian Seal has a northern Arctic origin. In any case, now its habitat is limited only to the Caspian Sea. The northern part of the Caspian Sea is particularly important for the Caspian Seal. From autumn to mid-spring, the bulk of the population migrating across the Caspian Sea concentrates particularly in this area for one of the most significant stages of their life cycle, for breeding. Most female seals pup during late January, early February, after the 11 months pregnancy. A female Caspian seal usually delivers one pup, rarely two. In recent years, seal breeding grounds have been forming mostly in the Kazakhstan part of the Caspian ice mass. The length of newborn pups, or baby seals, is 65 to 79 centimeters, and the weight is about 5 kilograms. They have a soft, long and thick white coat with a smoky grayish touch on the back, for which they got their name. The birth coat begins to change when the baby seals reach the age of two weeks. For three weeks, both day and night, the mother feeds the baby with nutritious fatty milk, resulting in the quick growth of the pup. By the end of milk feeding, it grows to 85 centimeters and weighs about 15 kilograms.
At the end of February, early March, milk feeding stops and young seals are forced to start an independent life. The bulk of them finally leaves the ice in the first half of March. When females stop feeding the baby seals, the mating season starts for the adult seals. Shortly before that, males begin to actively invade the breeding grounds, and in the second decade of February towards the end of the month, there are frequent fights between males and pursuit of females. After a while, seals form couples, observed both in water and on ice. By the end of the first decade of March, the mating season for the most seals ends. Up to the end of the mating season, the molting season begins. The change of pelage occurs in all age groups, except for the latest pup. The most numerous groups of molting seals are observed in the first half of March, in the area of large water openings. As drifting ice dissolves, molting seals begin to gather on high piles of ice formed on shallow waters. Since the animals do not have time to molt before the ice dissolves and need a solid base, they begin to go out on drying sandbanks, forming island grounds in the northern part of the sea. At the end of May, early June, the vast majority of Caspian seals finish molting. The composition of molting grounds changes over time. At first, they consist of adult and immature animals of both sexes. But then, in April, adult females leave the ice and only males and young individuals remain. Every year, most of the population, up to 90%, makes a spring trophic migration to the Middle and South Caspian Sea, where they feed and return to the northern part in late autumn for winter breeding on the ice. One of the reasons why seals leave the shallow northern part of the sea in the spring for the south is considered to be heavy warming of the water in summer, which the seals avoid. In summer, seals form coastal grounds on a number of islands of the northeastern and northwestern Caspian Sea, which consist mainly of immature animals. In late autumn, adult males are the first to come to these grounds, followed by pregnant females. The seals stay on island rookeries until the sea freezes. The causes for the Caspian seal population decline over the past century are of concern to scientists, ecologists, governmental bodies and the global community. The species has been subjected to intense hunting, as seal hunting has existed since time immemorial. People used to hunt them for their own survival. Seals were hunted for their skin and fur, which were used to make clothes or boats. Fat was also used as lamp fuel, grease and medicine for patients with lung diseases, while meat was consumed as food. In the 19th, early 20th century, seal hunting took on a large scale. People did not think at all about the future of these remarkable animals. Intensive sea hunting industry, which lasted until the end of the 60s of the 20th century and the deterioration of the Caspian Sea environment, led to a decrease in seal numbers. Only the measures taken in 1970 to regulate the hunting industry somewhat stabilized the situation, which remained at the same level until the 1980s. It is assumed that in the early 20th century, the population of the Caspian seal was about one million. Aerial survey of breeding females on the breeding grounds conducted for the first time ever in 1973 allowed to more accurately determine the total population, which was estimated at 450,000 individuals at that time. According to scientists, the population of the Caspian seal is currently in a depressed state. In addition to the excessive exploitation of this animal in the 1960s and 1970s, which has led to a decrease in its number, the reduction and disappearance of habitats due to anthropogenic impact and abnormally warm winters undermine the possibility of reproduction and achieving a stable level of the seal population. In the spring of 2000, mass seal deaths occurred. According to official data, over 10,000 seals of different ages died. Scientists believe that the cause of the tragedy was chronic toxicosis of animals, 
which led to a weakening of immunity and the spread of parasitic and infectious diseases such as canine distemper. These marine mammals often die of pneumonia caused by acute respiratory viral infections, and the data obtained by scientists indicate the involvement of viruses in the death of seals. In particular, based on conclusions of scientific organizations, most seals found in November 2022 died from virus-associated acute pneumonia as a result of an outbreak of mixed influenza and morbillivirus infection during the autumn concentration of animals. Chronic poisoning of seals with immune toxicological elements and compounds contributes to their increased susceptibility to infectious diseases due to a weakened immunity and overall resistance of animals. Seasonal variability of habitats is a specific biological feature of the Caspian seal. At the same time, it should be noted that Caspian seals need the ice cover, which is formed exclusively in the Kazakhstani and Russian sectors of the North Caspian Sea for birth, reproduction and molting. Therefore, the mass death of seals is mainly recorded in the Kazakhstani part of the Caspian Sea and in recent years on the Russian coast. Besides, it should be noted that due to peculiar migration routes, the Caspian seal mainly lives in the northeastern part of the Caspian Sea from October to May. Moreover, according to scientists, approximately 0.5% of the total population dies from natural causes every year. Thus, when spring comes, all the corpses of seals that died in winter on ice and in water along the sea are mainly stranded to the Kazakhstani coast near Karajanbas, Kalamkas and Bautino Spit due to the prevailing west wind and surface flows. In 2008, based on the data of Kazakhstan, Russian and Western studies, the Caspian seal was recategorized as endangered species and included into the red list of the International Union for Conservation of Nature. As of today, it is listed in the red books of all five Caspian littoral states, and hunting the seals on their territories is prohibited. Scientists believe that climate change has the greatest negative impact on preservation of a viable population of the Caspian seal. Significant areas of the North Caspian Sea remain ice-free, which leads to a decrease in population replenishment. Currently, due to global climate warming, there is a reduction in the area of ice flows suitable for formation of so-called breeding grounds, which is a kind of maternity ward of seals. Warm winters are also very dangerous for seals. In a mild winter, newborn pups may end up in the water due to thin ice. Such occurrences lead to diseases in young seals. During warm winters, the solid ice area suitable for breeding is small. Therefore, large quantities of marine animals accumulate in a confined area. In these conditions, a disease of several individuals would cause others to catch the infection too. The Caspian seal is an endemic species and the only mammal in the Caspian Sea wildlife which migrates across the sea and is categorized as a transboundary biological resource. In order to preserve the Caspian seal population, the Ministry of Ecology and Natural Resources of the Republic of Kazakhstan has taken a number of significant steps over the recent years. Specifically, pursuant to the governmental resolution, in November 2020, the Caspian seal was included into the list of rare and endangered animal species. Moreover, research organizations perform the following surveys, using the Republican budget funds with the program-oriented funding approach. Identification of the most significant seasonal rookeries of the Caspian seal. Studies of distribution, number and structure of seal accumulations at the rookeries. Gathering an analysis of materials to evaluate the seal nutrition. Seal migration surveys based on the seal tagging. 
Besides, to support the efforts of research organizations, during the 17th Kazakhstan-Russia Interregional Cooperation Forum in September 2021, Kasim Jomart Takayev, President of the Republic of Kazakhstan, instructed to examine the possibility of establishing a state natural reserve in the North Caspian Sea to preserve the Caspian Seal population. During this forum, the Ministry of Ecology and Natural Resources of the Republic of Kazakhstan and the Ministry of Ecology and Natural Resources of the Russian Federation signed the Joint Action Plan for Preservation of the Caspian Seal Population for the 2021 to 2026 period. Pursuant to this plan, Joint surveys are carried out with the Russian researchers to monitor the Caspian seal population status, since the ice cover required for the seal pupping is formed only in the Kazakhstani and Russian sectors of the Caspian Sea. The monitoring surveys include the following. First, study of the ice field condition based on meteorological data and satellite images. Second, aerial surveys to evaluate the number of Caspian seals using multispectral imaging, including continuous thermal imaging. In this case, the photographs help to identify the aerial survey targets and document the reliable recognition of seals on infrared images. Thermal imaging is the most effective way to identify warm-blooded mammals on ice due to the significant temperature difference between the warm-blooded seal's body and the snow and ice cover. Third, aerial reconnaissance in order to adjust the route of the ice-breaking vessel and thus minimize the impact on seals. Fourth, satellite tagging of individual seals to monitor migrations of the Caspian seals. To date, the draft scientific justification for creating a reserve has been developed based on the research and will be followed by the feasibility study to support the establishment of a specially protected nature conservation territory. The draft scientific justification determines the category of the specially protected nature conservation territory, its boundaries, area, security arrangements and possibility to perform certain operations within this area. Now it is envisaged to allocate funds for the feasibility study development under the revision of the Republican budget for 2023. Based on the scientific justification and feasibility study, it is planned to establish an offshore state natural reserve in the Caspian Sea in the form of a legal entity by July 2024. While developing the North Caspian project, NCOC cares about protection of the North Caspian Sea environment to the highest environmental standards applicable to petroleum operations. One of the company's objectives is to preserve biological diversity and, in particular, the Caspian seal population. In 2019, a five-year Kazakhstani-Russian program for Caspian seal study in the North Caspian offshore area, 2019 to 2023, was developed with the financial support of NCOC. The agreement between Kazakhstan and Russian scientists provides for comprehensive studies of the seal population across the North Caspian Sea. The scientists' research was agreed with competent stake authorities of both countries, the Fishery Committee of the Ministry of Ecology and Natural Resources of the Republic of Kazakhstan and the Federal Fisheries Agency of the Russian Federation. The Kazakhstani side is represented by the Kazakh Agency of Applied Ecology, the Scientific and Production Center of Fisheries, and the Scientific and Production Center of Microbiology and Virology. The Russian side is represented by the All-Russian Scientific Research Institute of Fisheries and Oceanography, and the Severtsov Institute of Ecology and Evolution. The 
The purpose of the multi-year international program is to study the current state of the population and monitor the Caspian seal in order to clarify the current number and reproductive potential and to clarify its biology features to develop measures and recommendations for protection of this mammal. While developing the North Caspian project, we care at the North Caspian Sea Environment Conservation and Compliance with high environmental standards. In addition to hydrocarbon production, we, as the operator and our international partners, have committed to mitigate environmental impacts. Therefore, we perform environmental monitoring studies offshore and onshore. The North Caspian Sea, with its western part in Russia and eastern part in Kazakhstan, is of great importance for seals breeding on its ice. Comprehensive international studies of the Caspian seal are a response to the growing concern of the scientific community about the state of the population of this unique marine mammal. They were initiated by our company, jointly with the scientists of the Republic of Kazakhstan and the Russian Federation. The purpose of joint research is to study the current status of the Caspian seal as an endemic species of the Caspian Sea fauna and an indicator species of the Caspian ecosystem. To get full understanding of the Caspian seal population state, before starting the actual research, Groups of international scientists carefully studied all known literature and information about the only mammal inhabiting the Caspian Sea, collected by our company during systematic and consistent studies since 1994. NCOC organized annual winter aerial surveys in the North Caspian Sea to determine the number of Caspian seals, as well as the studies of their favorable habitat in the spring and autumn seasons and the activities to determine the impact of ice-breaking vessels on seal population. The population size is studied during the winter aerial surveys of seals on ice of the North Caspian Sea, when the majority of adult females gather here to give birth to pups. Aerovisual survey is a method used to accurately estimate the population size, which allows surveys over vast areas within a relatively short period of time. Previously, in 2005 to 2012, NCOC has initiated and supported aerovisual surveys of the Caspian seal population using a light aircraft. The survey was carried out by an international group of scientists, including specialists from Norway, the United Kingdom, Estonia, Kazakhstan and Russia. According to the Aerovisual survey conducted within the said period, the total estimated population of the Caspian Seal was approximately 110,000. The results of these long-term aerial surveys featured a wide scatter. This is because the observers on the aircraft could not clearly see the seal pups due to their light coloration camouflaging them against snow and ice cover. They also did not record and missed a significant part of adult animals during the flyover. Undercount of animals was also caused by many other factors such as weather conditions, ice conditions and flight parameters. At the same time, a multispectral aerial survey of seals only in the Russian part of the North Caspian Sea in 2012, conducted by Russian scientists using a flying laboratory equipped with a thermal imager, photography and video equipment, estimated the population at 270,000 animals. Therefore, discrepancies in the assessment data preclude a unified position on rational use and conservation of the Caspian seal population. As part of improvement of the Caspian Marine Mammals Survey methodology, NCOC ecologists, jointly with the involved scientists, decided to use instrumented and visual aerial survey to count the seals, which is successfully implemented in the White, Okhotsk, Bering and other seas. Instrumented survey methods have a number of advantages. Major thermal contrast of animals on a relatively cold underlying surface, from 5 to 15 degrees, allows their detection via infrared images. Due to high contrast, automatic animal infrared recognition and survey methods are successfully used, while a special wide-range scanner helps to expand the survey range, and the instrumented aerial survey makes it possible to record all animal encounters. 
Instrumented survey methods allow for detecting and identifying not only adult animals, but also seal pups with protective coloration. Multispectral aerial survey, focusing on the size of breeding stock and pups, was conducted with the use of infrared video and photo recording from small airplanes. Main flight altitude is 150 to 200 meters, which allows required contrast of thermal marks for detecting seals on infrared imagery of the ice surface, and high resolution for reliable identification of adult seals and pups in photographs. The multispectral aerial survey method means a survey of seal rookeries performed simultaneously in infrared and visible spectrums. Continuous infrared imaging of the underlying surface is performed steadily at the operating altitude. The operator of the aerial survey equipment monitors the quality of infrared images and photographs on the computer screen and controls the equipment settings at the beginning of each performed tack to improve the quality of the seal imagery. Concurrently with the instrumented survey, visual observations are performed from each side of the aircraft. They are conducted continuously at a wide viewing angle through windows located on the sides of the aircraft. Observers overview the state of seal rookeries with periodic narration of ice and weather conditions during the flight and also report other useful information on animal behavior, presence of predators, pollution. The observers' messages and comments are recorded as audio files for subsequent decoding and use in interpreting the survey results. Surveys are carried out using a flying laboratory for special pre-calculated coordinates or transects. Modern technical devices are also used, including a combination of special cameras, video equipment, thermal images, and a survey software installed on the flying laboratory, which help to identify the exact number of seals on the ice. This survey system is being applied in our region for the first time. The ice conditions, availability or the lack of ice are the main factors which determine the life of the Caspian seal. This is due to the fact that this seal species has remained in the Caspian Sea, apparently since the ancient times, when water used to reach here. In general, this is an Arctic species. To a greater degree, like all other Arctic seals, it is bound to ice. It is known that the area of ice in the western and eastern part of the North Caspian Sea is subject to varying degrees of changes. This water area of the North Caspian Sea is shallow. There are no currents here, therefore currents do not significantly impact the state of ice conditions at all. And the winds in winter and in spring are also very strong, but mainly during winter time for sure. As a result, ice shifts occur here with ice changing its configuration and this also largely determines the possibility of using ice for seal breeding. In warm winters, ice actually occurs only in a small edge near the northern shore of the Caspian Sea and when the winters are harsh, its area is much larger. In the Kazakhstani sector it goes down to Mangishlag and in the Russian sector it almost reaches Makhachkala. Unfortunately, these days such cases do not occur as often as before, and this also determines the condition of the Caspian seal. The number of pups and respective surviving quantity determines the actual number of the Caspian seal. It is therefore vital to monitor the ice conditions, to monitor the state of the ice on a continuous basis, thus allowing forecasting certain occurrences. Each aerial survey is preceded by an analysis of the space map of ice conditions taken from the NASA website, Lance Modis. This is needed to examine certain areas of the ice cover bordering on open water. It is in such areas where seals concentrate during the breeding season. Research on the smallest representative of the pinnipeds, the Caspian seal, reached a new milestone in February 2020. For the first time since 2012, an aerial survey of seals on the ice of the northeastern part of the Caspian Sea was conducted. In early spring, the molting grounds in the southeastern part of the North Caspian Sea were covered by the survey.
The winters of 2019 to 2020 and 2021 to 2022 can be defined as relatively early warm winters. Therefore, the period of mass reproduction of mature females of the Caspian seal was shifted to earlier dates. High air temperatures for winter and storm winds destroyed the sea ice cover in the western part of the North Caspian Sea, and the main breeding part of the population concentrated in its eastern part. However, despite the climatic disturbances, aerial surveys were carried out on entire eastern ice rookeries, and the population was counted within the shortest period. The winter of 2020 to 2021 was more favourable for the Caspian seal breeding, as ice covered most of the North Caspian Sea. By the end of January 2021, the ice cover extended to the south of the seal's island and even farther southwards. It was in the southernmost part of the ice that the Caspian seal rookeries began to form. However, it became much warmer in the first decade of February, and the area of the ice field had reduced dramatically, from 90% to 64%. The southern part of the ice field was destroyed by storms. The Caspian seal breeding in winters over recent years was satisfactory. This is evidenced by the length, body condition, and color of pups. The photographs show many barrel-shaped fat seals, both adults and pups, which is also indicative of a good population condition. Studies of previous years have shown that in the early 20th century, the Caspian seal population numbered 1 million animals, while in 2006 to 2012, it estimated a mere 100,000. One of the factors contributing to the seal population reduction could be consumption of fish, which contains the organic chlorine compounds, which in turn causes the weakening of seal immune system and their vulnerability to diseases. Based on the current state of the Caspian seal population, as of 2022, the lower bound of its total estimated number is 311,000 seals. Analysis of the data available for 2012, 2020, 2021 and 2022 demonstrated an increase in the reproduction rate in 2022 by 19% as compared to 2012 and by 4.5% as compared to 2020. The survey was carried out using small Piper aircraft, which is equipped with this kind of equipment. This is thermal imaging equipment, high-resolution photo camera and accurate navigation equipment. Satellite data helped us a lot with this survey. Cameras give us quality data and we also received from NCOC the data on the movement of icebreakers, which defined both ice and seals encountered on the icebreaker route. In addition, NCOC provided good radar images of ice and visible range for us to more accurately determine the area for conducting flights. All this data helped us to identify places where seals could be located. And these four flights just show that their number is quite high. The information received from three levels, from space, from icebreakers as a ground information, and from an airplane, will enable us to build a more objective picture of the distribution of seals. Aerial surveys are performed both in winter and in spring on molting grounds, and in autumn on pre-winter accumulations of seals when they gather on sand islands. In spring and autumn, seals concentrate on small islands off the eastern and western coasts of the North Caspian Sea. These islands are accessible to scientists, where they conduct another part of comprehensive research. They install satellite tags on seals, which record their location and migration routes. Satellite telemetry tags are widely used all over the world to study the distribution areas and migration routes of marine mammals. In general, the migration of the Caspian seal has not been studied fully enough. Therefore, NCOC conducts research using satellite tagging, which allows obtaining new information on behavior and ecology of the Caspian seal. 
The research launched by the company using satellite tagging of seals represents application of new technologies to study the Caspian Sea's endemic. Understanding the aspects of the seal's vital activity is necessary to minimize the potential negative impact of the company's production operations and infrastructure on their population. Satellite telemetry data, combined with data from other studies, will provide information required to plan the company's activities in this direction. Helicopter search flights of the coastal zone and the islands of the northeastern part of the Caspian Sea were conducted to detect seal rookeries. For the purpose of tagging and obtaining physiological data, seals were caught both with special nets from the shore and with nets from boats. The selected seals were placed in fixer net stretchers for tagging and taking biological samples, according to which their health condition was analysed. All seals were released back immediately after the tags were installed. In 2019 and 2020, satellite radio beacons were successfully installed on 20 seals in order to study the ways of their movement in the sea as part of the International Comprehensive Research Programme. The five-year plan of the company's ecologists provides for installation of another 50 beacons. The data obtained lay the foundation for future research and gave the first insight into the seal's movements and use of the Caspian Sea. Tags provide information on the daily location of animals with an accuracy of 250 to 1500 meters, trace migration routes and identify places of emergence to land or ice. Thus, scientists can see the whole picture of the seal migration routes, places of their feeding and reproduction. The radio signals relayed by the tag are recorded by a satellite flying over this territory. In order for the satellite to receive a signal from the transmitter, the transmitter itself and the transmitting wire should be completely above water. The duration of the tag's functioning is limited by the molting period. It was found that the autumn-winter migration of the Caspian seal is more complex. Previously, it was believed that, having moved north before the winter, seals remain in the northern part of the Caspian Sea throughout the ice season. However, the dynamic behaviour revealed by tagging studies, when animals repeatedly entered the area covered with ice and left it, as well as emerged in more southern areas, represents new, important information in the study of this species. Throughout the autumn, the seals moved through a shallow area in the northeast of the Kazakhstani sector of the Caspian Sea. Most likely, this area is the autumn habitat of animals and is used by a significant part of the breeding adult population awaiting formation of winter ice. Satellite telemetry data allowing tracking of tagged seals shows that the northeastern part of the Caspian Sea, from Komsomolets Bay to the mouth of the Zhaik River and the coastal migration corridor are important areas of nutrition, recreation and migration from October until formation of the ice cover. During the nursery period, the tags of most seals showed numerous movements in small, limited areas of the sea, measuring about 10 to 20 square kilometers, which they use for fattening. Feeding migrations last for several days to several weeks. Research data indicates that individual seals may focus in fattening in certain habitats, for example in shallow water rather than at depth, or in certain feeding pastures confined to open, or vice versa, coastal areas. Throughout the study period, most tagged seals moved at a comparable pace. Covering about a thousand kilometers per month, they demonstrated a relatively constant speed of movement, covering a distance of 18 to 58 kilometers per day. Along with seal tagging, biological samples are taken, such as fur fibers and blood, mucous membrane swabs for further parasitology, microbiology, immunoassay, toxicology, genetic and virological tests.
To study the current health condition, a group of specialists from Russia and Kazakhstan conduct sampling for morphometric, genetic, serology, hormone, virology, parasitology studies, so that we learn about its general health condition. We also conduct toxicology studies to understand whether there are accumulations of various toxic agents, heavy metals in the Caspian Sea. The morphometric parameters are first taken when the seal is brought on board. Then blood and swab samples are studied for virology and parasitology. Hair sampled for serology and genetic studies, and satellite studies installed to monitor the migration of the Caspian seals in winter and spring. All these studies were carried out using only intravitam methods, as to not hurt the animal's health, not to injure it. After taking samples, all these animals were released. Biological sampling is needed to assess the well-being of the population, its ability to resist various infections and diseases. Toxicology analysis allows determining which pollutants and in what concentrations are contained in the blood, organs and tissues of seals. There is a very interesting issue concerning integrity of the seal population. Is there an integrity? Or, if there's none, which subpopulation experiences the biggest stress? Genetic tests are performed to address this issue. Biomaterial for lab studies is sampled during field work in the Kazakhstani and Russian sector from live and dead seals. Nasal, rectal swabs and necropsy material are handed over to the Scientific and Production Center of Microbiology and Virology in Almaty for further lab tests. Currently, we do not know the entire biology and ecology of the Caspian seal. The circulation of various diseases in the population has not been studied and the level of immunity of animals has not been assessed. There is no information about their hormones state or a concept of the genetic structure of the species, as well as a reliable, non-invasive way to determine the age of seals. All this information is necessary to develop adequate and effective measures for the Caspian seal protection. A comprehensive seal study program has been developed, in part, to address these issues. Thanks to advanced development of science, including molecular diagnostics, we are now able to conduct extensive studies of viral diseases. We have accumulated certain experience, and we are able to diagnose and determine all known viruses in the world spread among animals, marine animals, here in Kazakhstan. We can even identify new viruses unknown to the world science. With the help of molecular research methods, we can conduct both bacteriology, parasitology and virology testing. The well-being of the Caspian seal population is also determined by its nutrition. Throughout the entire feeding period, from late spring to mid-autumn, the animals consume a variety of foods. It is mostly all kinds of small fish, gobies, herring and crustaceans. At this time, the weight gain of animals increases significantly. If in the spring, the weight of an adult male is 40 to 45 kilograms, by January it reaches 56 to 63 kilograms. During the breeding and molting period, nutrition is not of great importance for seals. If there is no food, the animals starve, but do not leave the ice. After the ice dissolves, seals are forced to stay in the water for a long time. Some disposal of them afloat in areas of large ice rookeries is due to the search of food. Experts pay much attention to the study of pollution of seals with toxic organic substances. In 2020, toxicology studies were carried out in three directions. Studies of the content of persistent organic pollutants, studies of the content of heavy metals, and comprehensive studies of the content of mercury in the blood, wool, and whiskers of seals. In general, the content of pollutants is below the values that may cause a depressive state of seals.
The Caspian seal is a predatory animal, a representative of the upper trophic level. During the open water period, it has no natural enemies. In winter, during the pupping season, which takes place in the water area of the ice flow, newborn seals become easy prey for white-tailed eagles, as well as predatory animals that have penetrated there – wolves, jackals, dog foxes. Marine navigation of icebreakers in winter is another factor affecting seals. During this time, the animals are most vulnerable, because during winter navigation they may be located in the routes of ships. In this regard, understanding the aspects of the seal's vital activity, study of habitats, reactions to the icebreaker navigation, will help to minimize the impact of the company's activities on their population. However, it should be noted that the impact of marine navigation is complex. On the one hand, the icebreaker navigation during this important period for seals creates the likelihood of females flush. Their submergence into the water, accidental falling of young seals into the formed ice holes and under the foreship. On the other hand, the icebreaker navigation through solid ice creates streams and ice holes, which are convenient for animals in ice rookeries. In winter, offshore production operations at the Kashigan field are supported by icebreaking vessels. Of course, there is a certain impact of winter icebreaking navigation on the seal population, and research from the icebreaking vessels performed by our company allows for elaborating suggestions and actions to reduce icebreaking vessels' impact on the Caspian seal population during pupping and nursing. Generally, research from icebreaking vessels is aimed at studying seals' behavior when vessels approach and elaborating new recommendations to reduce the impact. Yearly, during winter icebreaking navigation, we take such measures as briefing the icebreaking vessel captains and crews prior to the pupping season. Aerial reconnaissance of seal habitats along the icebreaker's routes is performed by helicopters. Specially trained specialists, seal observers, are boarded on vessels to help avoid seals. All these effective measures are improved on the annual basis to mitigate the impact of population of such marine mammals and to minimize, to reduce the impact on the seal population in winter in the North Caspian Sea. The number of icebreakers between the Kashigan field and the Barutino base has been reduced to two units. Studies of seals from the icebreakers, which started in 2006 and still continue today, have shown that the behavioral reaction of a seal to the icebreaker navigation depends on the distance to it. And it should be noted that no incidents involving collisions of companies' icebreakers with seals have been recorded in recent years. In winter, two icebreakers usually cruise between the Bautino offshore supply base in Mangista Oblast to the Kashagan field, which make five to eight voyages during the entire winter navigation period. Each icebreaker uses infrared thermal images for the early detection of accumulations of seals en route at night and during adverse weather conditions. The sensitivity of the infrared camera is very high. For example, at a distance of one kilometer, animals are clearly visible on the screen, which allows vessels to avoid collisions. A team of observers is present during each trip of the icebreaker to the Kashagan field. Specially trained seal observers and representatives of environmental authorities conduct continuous monitoring from the command bridge on each side of the vessel. The watch always includes two observers, one on each side, or one observer in the bridge center. When passing the places of the alleged accumulation of seals at night, the entire team of observers, two on each side, is mobilized to the command bridge. Seal observers on each side of the bridge scan the ice cover with binoculars in front and on both sides of the icebreaker. All seals and their number are recorded. The distance to the icebreaker board is measured using a laser range finder. The observers take pictures of the seals encountered en route, whenever possible, with a variable focus digital camera used on each side of the bridge.
It should be noted that studies of the impact of icebreaker navigation on seals have shown that icebreakers cause the greatest disturbance to females and pups located within about 100 metres distance from the icebreaker's route. Therefore, the main purpose of measures on impact mitigation is to ensure the icebreaker navigates at a distance of over 100 metres from the pups. Based on the observations, it was found that a distance of 150 metres is harmless. Thus, reduction of the impact is achieved by planning the icebreaker route, bypassing places of accumulation of breeding seals. The purpose of onboard measures to reduce the impact in areas of low density of breeding seals is to monitor possible appearance of any seals on ice in front of the icebreaker and to ensure manoeuvring of the vessel, allowing it to pass at a safe distance from the animals. There was no harmful impact on seals during the 2016 to 2021 navigation period. Not a single seal and pup has been injured. Skilled actions of the observer team and the vessel crew by reducing vessel speed, manoeuvring or stopping completely made it possible for the seals and their offspring to move to a safe distance. The five-year Integrated Caspian Seal Study Programme, funded by NCOC, will provide fundamental information for development of scientifically valid measures to preserve this unique animal. In the long term, it is planned to combine the scientific potentials of all Caspian states, which will enable elaboration and implementation of actions to preserve the population of the Caspian seal and other marine inhabitants in the changing climate and increasing economic development of the Caspian Sea, and to preserve the unique and fragile Caspian ecosystem and its exceptional distinctive features.